So before we get into today's topic, just to round out last video, thanks to everyone for leaving comments. It was really cool to see what else you guys thought should be included in future updates. Guppy pointed out that assigning hotkeys to every pose doesn't really make a lot of sense. And to that, I completely agree. You should never assign hotkeys to every pose. In my experience, just having hotkeys for the five major vowels and open, closed, and relaxed hand positions was enough to save me thousands of hours of cleanup in the past. Also, I thought Kia Voids had the best idea for an optimal solution. Blender already separates work into different modes, and I like the idea of having temporary hotkeys for animations that are only active while in pose mode. It's a very unique type of Blender solution, and it's also super efficient and would save a lot of time. So that's the one that I think would work best, and thank you for sharing ideas, because that's really what we're trying to do here. As for today's topic, I want to talk about things that Blender should steal from itself. Because I really feel like sometimes Blender just shoots itself in the foot for no reason. And we all kind of just pretend not to see the solution even when it's right there. Like sometimes Blender will have a truly amazing feature that helps everyone with no downside and then hides it from everybody. Yes, we are talking about Node Wrangler. Now when I try a new version of Blender, I specifically don't import my old settings because I want to see what the new users see when they open Blender for the first time. And the first thing that I checked after downloading Blender 3.0 was whether or not Node Wrangler was finally active straight out of the box by default. And probably to no one's surprise, it was not. Which means that everyone has to waste their time turning this on at least once. And I feel like this highlights a very unique Blender problem that keeps getting overlooked. Node Wrangler is an amazing tool that lets you master texture maps. It has the unique ability to let you isolate a single node. It's super useful when you want to see what the hell a node is doing. And it also gives you the abilities to drag and drop connections and create nodes super fast with hotkeys. This tool is actually so advanced that they don't even have this kind of feature in Maya. And just to make sure, I contacted a professional Maya specialist specialist and asked him, does Maya have a built-in feature to do what Node Wrangler does in Blender? And after showing him a video, he straight up admitted that Maya does not have anything close to what he's seeing in Node Wrangler. Like you could finagle some Mel script together to emulate it, but it would not be the same. Which means that Blender is actually ahead of the industry standard in this area when it comes to Node Wrangler. This is literally one of Blender's biggest advantages when it comes to the competition. And it's always off by default. It isn't even a big file. It hardly uses any space and it's not like turning it on by default is going to crash anyone's computer or negatively affect anyone that doesn't use it. And to anyone who's wondering what's the big deal, it just takes a few seconds to turn on man. And to that I say, why not just save your community time and just have it on by default? Like really, I want to know the reason. Because let me put it this way, let's see how long it takes for us to turn it on. And this is raw unedited footage, so we'll just go into Blender, go to edit, preferences, add-ons, go to the search bar, type in node wrangler, wait for it to come up, click the arrow, check the box, okay, it's on. Took like 16 seconds. We're gonna round that up to 20 because a new user would definitely not know how to do that the first time they open the software. So it takes 20 seconds. And how many Blender users are there? Well, it's been downloaded about six million times and the official website says probably between one to three million users. So let's just say two million total users. 20 times two million is 40 million seconds of your community's time gone. 1.26 years of time evaporates every time this box is not checked by default. And I know this sounds like I'm being picky, but my honest question is why? Why not just check the box and save your community all the lost time? Blender has a beautiful mission to get the world's best 3D CG technology into the hands of artists as free and open source software. And for the most part, they have accomplished it. Sometimes they've achieved it so well, it creates things that even the industry standard software doesn't have. And it does this with a team of like 30 people and a great community, which is ridiculous. And that's why I'm not trying to ask for things that I know would take up lots of time and resources. I don't expect Blender's team to start spending their time integrating machine learning or something into my animations. I know that kind of stuff is unreasonable for me to expect for them to go out of their way with such a small team. But in the next variation of Blender, is it really too much to be asked for this box to be checked by default? If it is, let me know because I'd love a reason. In the meanwhile, as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.